Happy Friday, everyone. So I had to throw on the green shirt because we had a green day. I'm not gonna do this on every green or red market day because I don't have that many red or green shirts. Now, that being said, the Fed turned dovish. And I went to look at a couple of the comments that I got on the channel last night when I had mentioned that this might be a possibility. Let's run that tape real quick. So if I'm gonna make this content and share it all with you. And I, I just wanna believe that the Fed is gonna come in dovish tomorrow. I'm just gonna, I might be wrong on that. I'm sure that it's a low chance, but that is what I'm hoping for is the Fed comes dovish tomorrow. Okay, so I had some gentlemen or nice gentle ladies come to the channel and we had a crypto school saying 100% not dovish, hope isn't a strategy. Well, crypto schools, nothing in life is ever 100% is it. Dave's Gone Wild really came in with the heat. Are you on crack, bro? A-R-A-C-K. The Fed is going to say inflation is shooting through the roof. Assets are at an all time high. So let's throw some rocket fuel on the fire and make them rip even higher, dot, dot, dot. Well, you did make me laugh. So thanks for that. Well, Dave, I'm glad that you got a good laugh out of it. I also got a good laugh out of it when I saw this comment was deleted <gasps> when I went and looked. Anyway, let's get on with the show. So what, what happened today in the market? So come on, Dave, you can do better. Tom Lee was saying that the Fed could go dovish. And I was thinking, all right, everyone is thinking at this point, after all these, uh, all these FOMC meetings, rate cut cycles, everyone is thinking the Fed is going to stay or straddle or even go hawkish. And that's why we saw the price action the way we did all week. And it just seemed to be getting to the point where it was getting overdone. So that's why I lean towards the Fed pivoting here. I mean, look at this stock heat map, you guys. That is greener than my shirt. That is greener than the greenest rolling hills of the Washington Palouse. It's beautiful. So today I want to talk about six different stocks. I want to talk about IonQ, Rigetti, Seal SQ, Ondis, Plug Power, and SoFi. So we got six stocks to cover, and I'm going to share some news that I've found. So as always, if you like content like this, if you like making money in the stock market, then click that like button because we did kind of this week. Not really. We we uh, we made some <laughs> we we made some back today, at least in my case. Anyway. Uh, let's let's get into it. So this was a big piece of news. Apple's exploring using Google Gemini to power a revamped Siri. And we saw Google just kind of pop on this news. So basically, it's pretty well known that Apple Siri sucks. And Google Gemini doesn't have that reputation of sucking as badly. So Apple working with Google would be uh, on a revamped version of the Siri voice assistant could be very nice. Saw this article today, Quantinuum eyes a $10 billion valuation in new fundraising talks. Quantinuum backed by Honeywell is weighing a new fundraising round that could value the company at $10 billion. NVIDIA has been approached as a potential investor. The company's valuation has doubled in about 18 months. So what does this mean for the wider sector of quantum? Well, one of the things you hear a lot, and since I've had this channel in 2025, I've had some pretty active contributors to the channel that are short quantum. And what they say is valuation, valuation, valuation. When you see a private company like Quantinium that's not publicly traded, that is talking about a $10 billion valuation and a 2X in 2025, then it starts to overlay a little bit better on the public companies like Rigetti and INQ and D-Wave and the levels and valuations that they're trading at. So interesting to see the companies are starting to become more valuable. Before we jump into the INQ chart, INQ patent count has surpassed 1,000 total intellectual property assets. So INQ announced a new U.S. patent that expands its intellectual property portfolio to more than 1,000 license-owned or controlled patents and applications. 
The latest patents cover secure long distance networking. IonQ positions its growing patent estate as central to developing scalable, high performance enterprise grade quantum systems that deliver commercial advantage. So very nice to see IonQ building a moat similar to D-Wave and many, there are 250 or so quantum annealing patents. Then we saw that Morgan Stanley disclosed a 7% stake in IonQ. So Morgan Stanley's investment disclosed a 7% ownership stake. The stake positions the quantum computing company within the portfolio is one of the world's largest institutional investors. Institutional investors in IonQ also include Amazon, which reported a 36.7 million stake earlier this year. All right, let's take a look at IonQ's chart. So we have been seeing a lot of sideways action with IonQ for a while. So I mentioned one of the channel subscribers, Jeff, who I've been emailing back and forth. He's been selling options on INQ and I feel like running the wheel, selling covered calls on INQ, man, you could have made a lot of money. I mean, Theta Gang is definitely winning for the last at least four or five months. And if we go back all the way to May, where this rally and then we had this explosion, Really, it's just been a sideways king since then. But today with the dovish Fed, we did see some nice green and we closed above 3950, which is a key level for IonQ. I would say it's the bottom of what I would consider this middle range. I'll, I'll just do a quick drawing so you can see what I'm talking about. So right here is kind of the meat and bone. So kind of got back into its lower range. I felt like 34 or 35, dipping down that far was a very good buying opportunity. If you, if we look back on the chart, that preceded the 38% move and the rally, and it never quite got all the way down to the bottom of this candle, as you can see, but it got awfully close. And it looks like that was a good buying opportunity. It still seems institutions are trading this sucker like crazy. Rigetti in the last month has been very volatile and it has definitely come down to its rising support. I'll, I'll take, I'll, sh I'll zoom out and show kind of, I'm going to take away my drawing. So it's a little easier to see. So basically we still have this uptrend. We, we also for a little while, we're getting a more accelerated uptrend but that sold off and now we are trading under $15 a share. So this yellow line, so this yellow line is $15. And as you can see, since we had the 36 qubit chip announcement, which sent the stock flying up to 17, 17 and a half dollars, we have now given back almost most of that rally, but we had to bounce today off of support and we closed just above, just below 15. And if we look back on Rigetti, if we look back like a year, Rigetti has traded below 15 for the most, most of the time. So for it to be trading above 15 is great growth for the stock. Let's hope that it can continue. Let's hope that what we're seeing today is a bounce. I actually thought Rigetti felt a little bit weak compared to the rest of the market when we saw so much exuberance in the rest of the market and even quantum stocks. Speaking of other quantum stocks, I almost forgot. We got to look at the quantum watch list. So Skywater was up today. QUBT actually had a 7.7% .7 day. So if people ask me on the channel why I don't cover QUBT as much, I invest a little bit in QUBT. I think it's interesting what they're doing. I just, I want them to be more open. Uh, if anyone knows anyone that works at QUBT, uh, it's very unlikely because I think there's like 20 people that work there. I don't know. Um, but the more open they are with investors, the more I'm going to cover them. In the meantime, I don't give a ton of coverage because I feel like they take one question on an earnings call and then that's it. They don't really share much about what what's going on with their research and company. So I, I just have a hard time. And I know other investors have a hard time trusting them. Um, that's something they need to work on. So INQ had that 7% day CLSQ. Maybe coming alive, bouncing off a pretty low number here because this was a four and a half dollar stock. So 6.5% day. D Wave had a 5% day and we're getting a 3% day. So really green down the quantum watch list, green down any watch list. Speaking of CLSQ and the price action for CLSQ, so 
what we can see from CLSQ is really that we had this rally up to about four and a half bucks, and then it's just sold down again. So it was trading and making higher highs until 450. And then it's really broken down and it's been in this bearish downtrend until recently. Well, you know what? I <laughs> longtime followers of the channel know that there's a level here at 388 that I really want to see. Um, and we're really far away from 388 on LAS. So I'm not even close to calling a reversal on LAS yet, but it's good to see a green candle. It's good to see a couple uh, day candles in a row that are green. So that's three day streak for CLSQ when you can see that they, there were many, many, many red days for CLSQ going into uh, this Jackson Hole. Nice to see a little bounce for CLSQ. All right, so Ondas. So we've been covering Ondas on the channel a lot and the stock is exciting. It moved up another 18% today. So if you guys are in this, just be careful. You know, stocks like this can go up really fast and they can come down just as fast as they go up. So if they don't have legs or if there's a rug pull, it can come back down to there can be a big, so you have to be careful about your entries and you have to be careful about your risk management. I personally am long on, on this, so I want to put that out there, but the growth has been incredible and the headlines from on have been incredible. I think the chart speaks for itself. It quite easily knocked out its 52 week high and now it's hunting for the 2022, 2021, and 2020 highs. And that would be a lot of upside from here. Numbers to look at would be 8, 10, 14. Of course, that would be a huge move. Of course, there's going to be volatility before that happens. We haven't really had enough price history or been in the stock long enough. Uh, my entry for Ondas was around here-ish, about the same spot as jeans. So I'm I'm learning about this stock as we go. I'm not recommending anyone enter it, but it's interesting. Nonetheless, they're doing well. Um, so go on this. All right, plug. So this is my, I haven't talked about plug on the channel for a little while uh, because it's, it's a penny stock really, but it's a big company. It's a big company that's a penny stock and they had their earnings and they actually had a revenue surprise, but they their earnings was a miss. So it was a mixed earnings, but what we've seen is overall, if we just look at the trend from earnings, we've been holding an uptrend. And the reason why this is interesting is because if you look back at plug, if you look back a couple years, you can see the stock traded at $3, $4, $7, $13, 19, 47, 70. So if they're able to make even a portion of a recovery, even a fractional recovery in the stock price, there could be a lot of upside from here. Of course, it found a bottom in April and May below a dollar. So keep that in mind. Set stop losses could always retrace back down um, if there's bad news. All right, final stock of the day is SoFi. And SoFi, I actually, so I want to, I actually want to get you, you all, I want, I actually want to hear from you in the comments on this. When do you guys sell shares when you're up a lot? Like that, I think is one of the hardest questions and it's not really talked about enough. And the YouTubers I watch, when do you take profits? Because the last couple of days I have, over a thousand shares of SoFi and I've taken some profits because I feel like, okay, my average was around 14, 15 and it's 25 a share. I do see that there's a lot more upside, but I also want to secure profits. So I'd love to hear what your price targets are with SoFi and where you think the stock is going. But what happened today is we cleared essentially this double resistance at 25 closed at 25 and the next wick is 2805 and if we look at what that would look like that's only another 
11%. SoFi did 7% today. So it's possible we could be looking at all time highs with SoFi sooner rather than later. And then from there, where do you think it goes? This company has been a Wall Street darling, except it hasn't been treated by, well by Wall Street. So it's kind of this, and what I mean by that is, look at how long the stock was held under seven and a half dollars before it finally had to break out up to up to eighteen dollars, and then Wall Street sent the stock down all the way to eight dollars before finally SoFi just making its run. Even this week, when the rest of the market has been struggling, or at least our stocks, our tech stocks, our quantum stocks, SoFi has done really well. So what's your price target? When do you guys take profits? What do you think um, is a bull case, bear case? I think a base case for me is we're just gonna go and capture 28. I don't know if it's gonna be something like a look above and then 25 will become support. I think in a bull case, 2805 would become support and we'd be in price discovery. And I think in a bear case, we'd retrace down to 18 and get caught there and possibly even 15 if things get really bearish. But we had a lot of good news going into the weekend. All right, guys, that is everything I have for you. I hope you really enjoyed this content. I did want to do something special because we had a fun Friday today. So I'm just going to pick a random comment on this video. I'm going to send you guys one of you will get a quantum bull shirt. I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support this YouTube channel, I have three different membership levels starting at $4.99 a month. They include quantum bull, gold bull, and diamond bull. Head over and click the plus button. You can learn more about these memberships and find out which one is right for you.